Welcome to Legion Builds Reloaded, where I guide you on how to bring your favorite characters into Dungeons & Dragons. Again, this video and all my content are made possible by my Patreon supporters and is dedicated to everyone who subscribes to my channel. As long as you guys like it, I'm going to keep doing this crazy thing, so thank you. Today we're building the king himself, Ash Williams. Arriving into the pop culture pantheon of horror in 1981's Evil Dead, Ash has appeared in numerous video games, comic books, three movies, and a TV show. He's easily recognizable amongst horror fans all around the world. Ash has faced off with the likes of Freddy Krueger, Jason Jason Voorhees, Xena, and the Marvel superheroes turned into zombies. Ash is by far the very definition of hapless nobody who has absolutely no clue what he's doing. That is until he's faced against a force of pure evil, and then Ash becomes the hero of the ages. By all accounts, Ash should probably have died a hundred times over by now, but no matter what, he always comes out on top. It's as if Ash has the ultimate power, plot armor. He can outrun almost anything, walk away nearly unharmed even when bones should have been broken, has has numerous skills, and can face off against demonic creatures and win even when battle-hardened warriors can't. For this build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook and Xanathar's Guide to Everything. We're using Standard Point Array to make things easy for you, and we are multi-classing, so keep an eye on those minimums. We'll start things off with Con at 15. You can take a hit, well, several hits, and keep going, though we will be giving you some damage reduction to help with this. Dex flies in at 14. You're not very nimble, but damn can you land on your feet when you need to. Plus, you like ranged weapons. Wisdom will be a 13. This is a minimum. And you have some common sense, you just tend not to listen. At this point, you should have probably figured out you have to pay attention. Intelligence will be coming in at a 12. Even though you have the attention span of a rock, you actually are really intelligent. Strength will be low with a 10, and we're dumping charisma. Not to be mean or anything, but you're not as cool as you think you are. Okay, well, actually, you are cool, but damn do you strike out a lot. We'll fix this later. Ash is the chosen one, which would explain why demon killing is the only thing he's good at, so Varian Human is the way to go. This will give you a free feat and skill with your stat improvements. Place plus one into Khan and Dex. For your feet, take Gunner. This adds plus one into Dex, gives you proficiency in firearms, lets you ignore loading properties of firearms, and being within five feet of a hostile creature does not impose disadvantage. Normally I don't use Gunner as there are DMs that don't allow firearms in their games, and firearms in D&D aren't really that good, but the pistol will work fine for you. If your DM doesn't allow firearms, replace this with Crossbow Expert. For your skill, grab Athletics. For background, grab the skills Persuasion and Investigation. Alright, let's get it going. Level 1 fighters start off with two skills. Grab Acrobatics and Perception. Fighting style grants you Archery. This is plus two to your attack rolls when using a ranged weapon. Second Wind lets you ignore wounds by healing yourself with a bonus action by 1d10 plus your fighter level once per short or long rest. Level 2 Fighters gain Action Surge. You can now give yourself a free action once per short or long rest. Level 3 Fighters now have their subclass. Champion, found in the player's handbook, will make you a better chosen one. Over time, it's a slow burn subclass. Improve Critical lets you score critical hits on a 19 or 20. Level 4 Fighters earn our first ability score improvement, but we need a feat. Lucky basically explains how Ash works. Lucky gives you 3 luck points to use on an ability check, saving throw, or attack roll. Spending a luck point gives you an additional d20 to the roll, and you can take it whenever you choose, like on a natural 1. You can also use this on opposing attack rolls against you, allowing you to choose which d20 is used. Now this doesn't grant advantage to your rolls or disadvantage on enemy rolls, just adds a d20 to the roll. If if you ever wonder how well this works, listen to the Stinky Dragon podcast and feel the DM's pain whenever Kyborg rolls a lucky dice. You rarely wear armor, so we're jumping classes to give you better damage handling regardless of what you're wearing. Level 1 Monks begin with Unarmored Defense. Your AC when not wearing armor is 10 plus Dex plus Wisdom. Martial Arts improves your unarmed strikes and simple melee weapons when not wearing armor. You can now make unarmed strikes and simple melee weapon Dex based. You can make an unarmed strike with a bonus action after taking the attack action, and your unarmed strikes and simple melee weapons can now use Martial Arts dice for damage. This starts off at a D4, but will upgrade later. Yeah, I know Ash doesn't know Martial Arts, but he sure as hell thinks he does. Remember kids, you're a badass regardless of what logic says. 
Level 2 monks receive unarmored movement. Now, when you don't wear armor, your movement is increased, bringing your total movement to 40 feet. Dedicated weapon can turn any weapon you're proficient with into a monk weapon, which will use dex, if that weapon lacks the heavy or special properties, which a chainsaw will most definitely be heavy and special. But you did use a long sword, and it's basically the same size as a chainsaw, so go with it. Key grants you key points that are equal to your monk level that allow you to perform special feats of strength just when you need them to happen. Flurry of Blows allows you to make two unarmed strikes with a single bonus action after taking the attack action by paying one key point. Patient Defense turns Dodge into a bonus action for one key point. Step the Wind turns Dash or Disengage into a bonus action and doubles your jump distance for one key point. Before we move on, let's talk about a fun idea for your chainsaw in hand. Talk to your DM about two common magic items, Prosthetic Limb and Arm Blade. Prosthetic Limb replaces a limb you have lost. Combine this with Arm Blade that merges a one-handed weapon with your Prosthetic Limb. Once merged, you can extend the weapon with a bonus action and can now use the weapon, but you can't use your hand. If your DM allows it, choose a Longsword because it will look perfect with this. Level 3 monks now have their subclass, and for some odd reason, you're the only person that can stop evil, so we need to start working on that no matter what you wield. Way of the Kensai, found in Xanathar's Improves Your Weapon Attacks. I use this subclass way too much, but I keep doing weapon experts, though this was actually the first one I used it with, so cool. Path of the Kensai lets you turn two weapons into special monk weapons that receive special features. At this level, you can choose one melee weapon and one ranged weapon. Choose your longsword and pistol. Agile Parry turns your Kensai weapon into a defensive weapon. Now, when making an unarmed strike with your attack action and holding a Kensai weapon while not using it, you can gain plus two to your AC until the start of your next turn. Kensai Shot lets you add damage to your ranged Kensai weapons with a bonus action. When you do this, you receive an extra 1d4 damage when you hit until the end of your current turn. Deflect Missile lets you reduce damage you receive from a ranged melee attack with a reaction by 1d10 plus dex plus monk level. You can even even throw the projectile back if you reduce the damage to zero and have an empty hand by spending one key point. Level 4 monks earn another ability score improvement. Bump up decks for more AC, attack, damage, and damage reduction. Slow fall will reduce damage you take from falling with a reaction by 5 times your monk level. Quickened healing lets you heal yourself with an action by spending two key points and rolling a martial arts dice and adding your proficiency bonus. Level 5 monks gain extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. Stunning Strike lets you knock the wind out of those you fight. When you hit a creature with a melee attack, you can spend one key point to force a con save against the creature, using your wisdom as the basis for the save. Should they fail, they are now stunned until the end of your next turn. Probably the best anti-spellcaster move in D&D. Focus Aim lets you turn a miss into a hit. Now when you miss with an attack, you can spend up to three key points and adding two per point spent to the attack. Even without the lucky feat, you're still lucky as hell. Finally, your martial arts dice are now a d6. Level 6 monks receive key empowered strikes and magical Kensai weapons. Your unarmed strikes and Kensai weapons are now magical, beating resistances of those damn demons and undead. Now, if your DM allowed the arm blade and prosthetic limb combo, your arm blade is already magical, but you still want this as your Kensai weapon get other features. You also get another Kensai weapon, pick whatever you want. Sadly, the closest thing to a shotgun in D&D, homebrew or third party included, would be a blunderbust, but that would be heavy so you can't choose this, but you can always find a magical one. You're good at all ranged weapons, so go ahead and choose anything. Death Strike lets you add an extra damage to your Kensai weapon by spending one key point and adding a martial arts dice. You can do this once per turn. Finally, your unarmored movement is now 45 feet. Level 5 fighters get nothing because extra attack doesn't stack yet. But a d10 hit dice is really nice since you've just spent 6 levels in a class that only gives you d8 hit dice. Level 6 fighters earn another ability score improvement, cap off dex. Level 7 champion fighters are remarkable athletes. You can now add half your proficiency bonus to any check you make that is strength, dex, or con that you don't already add your proficiency bonus to. You know, like maybe a con check to hold your breath and so on. Oh, and initiative checks. That's right, you're now adding more to initiative to get the drop on your enemies. You can also increase your jumping distance by your strength modifier, which is zero. But you already jumped twice as far, so who cares? 
Level 8 fighters earn another ability score improvement. Place a sense of charisma to get rid of that negative. Level 9 fighters gain Indomitable. You can now reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. Level 10 champion fighters get another fighting style. Superior technique gives you one maneuver from the Battlemaster subclass and 1d6 to your maneuver once per short or long rest. Goading attack adds the superiority dice to your attack damage and then forces a wisdom save based on your dex should they fail. They will now have disadvantage on attack rolls against anyone else but you until the end of your next turn. You always end up with people out of their depth, so protect them from getting hurt. Level 11 fighters receive extra attack times 2. You can now attack 3 times with a single attack action. That means you can attack 6 times with an action surge and 2 more times with unarmed strikes with a bonus action. Level 12 fighters earn another ability score improvement. Let's grab a feat. Tough gives you double your current character level in HP and then adds plus 2 to each level after. Your character level 18 by the way at this point. Level 13 fighters gain a second use of Indomitable. Our final level is level 14 fighter and you get our final ability score improvement bump up con for more health and always remember, health stacks retroactively over the course of the build. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap. Your stats are Strength 10, Dex 20, Con 18, Intelligence 12, Wisdom 13, Charisma 10. Your total levels are Fighter 14, Monk 6. Let's dive in. You are a meat sponge, or a tank if you don't want to use the realistic metaphor. Your total HP taking the average is over 220. You can heal yourself 1d10 plus 14 or 1d6 plus 6. You can reduce falling damage. You can reduce damage from ranged attacks. You can re-roll failed saves. And you can even add d20s to your saving throws. You can also just make it harder for people to hit you. In combat, you're ready to go. All your attacks are using your dex modifier, which is plus 5, are magical, and can spam attacks having both ranged and close quarter abilities, though your ranged attacks will be a little bit better. Can add a d6 to the damage, re-roll failed attacks, add d20s to to the attack roll and stun your enemies. Finally, you're just good at a lot of things and can add d20s to your skill checks. Downside. Resource management is your biggest problem. You currently have three luck points, two uses of indomitable, and six key points. These can be burned quickly without even noticing. You also don't have amazing saves. Strength and charisma are at a plus zero, while intelligence and wisdom are only a plus one. You don't have any negatives, thankfully, and your rerolls and luck dice will come in handy when you roll bad on those saves, but spellcasters could effectively weigh you down with saves and force you to burn them all. This can be fixed with better stats or to put it more plainly, roll for stats. But in all, this doesn't matter because you're not a solo act anymore. You fought alone long enough. Now rely on your team and take the fight to evil. Thank you for joining me today. Make sure to like and subscribe to not miss a single new build each week on YouTube and Spotify. And make sure to check out my Patreon where you can help decide next week's new character.